Okay, today we are going to talk about a couple of built-in utility types that TypeScript gives us. These are ones that I think don't get enough airtime, so we're going to correct that today. We're talking about extract and exclude, and I think one of the reasons these don't get more love than they do is that the examples given in the TypeScript docs are really not great. We've got some type union here, and then we have our two helpers here, exclude and extract. And if I hover over them, actually, we do see what they're about. When we use exclude, we're excluding from T types that are assignable to you. And then with extract, it's kind of the inverse. We're extracting from type T those that are assignable to you. I mean, they're pretty simple types. As you can see, we actually see the type definitions for them showing up right here. They're not doing anything too fancy. The examples themselves don't really give you a good understanding, I think, of how these can be used. We see, like I said, our type union of A, B, and C. And when we say we want to exclude A, the resulting type is a union of B and C. If I hover over T0 here, you can see we have that union of B and C. Okay, that's interesting, but doesn't seem particularly useful. Of course, extract here is just kind of the inverse of that. We have type T and we're saying, let's pull out anything that matches this type. So in that case, when we have A and F, we just get A out of there because A is the only element in our original T that matches the second argument of our extract. I think there are a couple of interesting ways that we can use extract and exclude, especially when it comes to using the types that another library gives you. We'll get to that, but first let's start with this example, filter by type, because this I think is an interesting example of how you can create a more intelligent filter function using extract. We've got a filter by type function. We've got two generic types here, T and U. T is some object that at the very least has a type field on it. And then U is some value that could be one of those types. In the example that we're gonna see here, we have our standard user and our admin user. And so our type could be user and admin. And as you can see, when we call this, we're gonna pass the argument admin. And so our type U is one of the possible values of type in our shape T. So we expect to receive an array of type T and then some type U. And of course, this is gonna simply do an array.filter. But the magic here comes in the return value for our filter predicate. We're saying if this returns true, then we're saying item, the item in the array, is type R. And this is where our extract comes in. It's not very common, I think, to see like types defined inside of a function. I just wanted to break this onto two lines instead of inlining the value of R here, just so it works a little better for you guys to see. But essentially, R is we're extracting from T the part of the union that matches T with a value of U. Okay, I know that seems a little abstract, so let's break it down with an actual example. Here we've got two types of users, standard users and admin users. And our user type here is a union of standard users or admin users. And so when we have an array of users, this array could have some standard users and some admin users. And so we could actually recreate one of these two types by using extract on our user here. Maybe we have a type SU just for standard user. We want to extract from user anything where the type is user. We're going to extract any types that match this type, any types in user where they have a type field that is just user. And if we hover over SU here, you can see this type here matches our type of standard user. We have type of user, of course, and we have an ID. And so we've taken the broader type of user and we've narrowed it based on essentially a predicate here, right? We know one of the fields here. Now this could be something else, right? We could have said anywhere where the type is string. And in that case, this is going to match both standard users and admin users. We could have said something that is not unique to each, like something where the ID is number. And again, this is going to match standard users and admin users. So we're not actually narrowing. But if you do have a type union that is narrowable based on something like a type, we can say that where the type is specifically user and we get that narrowed type. All of that to say, that's exactly what we're doing inside of our filter by type function here. We create a new type here that extracts that particular type from T. And the nice thing about this is this will work for any union that uses type as its differentiating field. Let's see this in action. We've got some users array here. We can filter by type, pass it the users. We can say the type is admin. We can hover over admins here and we can see that now the result is an admin user array. And just to see that this is actually working, if I remove item is R and we just let filter work in its normal way. I can hover over admins and you can see this is still just a user array, even though we have filtered to only include admin users. And of course, one of the nice things I'll just point out, not specifically related to extract, but because we're saying U has to be one of the types of T, if we were to use some other type in here, you'll see we get an error because this is expected to be either user or admin. And so it can actually infer the correct value for this argument based on the types that it sees in the first argument that we pass in. So this is admitted 
admittedly a little bit of a contrived example. Filter by type could be useful if you're trying to just create a set of utilities that you can share across your application. But I think one of the places where extract and exclude really shines is when it comes to using library types. And we're gonna use React Query because this is a library I've been using a bunch recently. If you're not familiar with React Query, it's essentially a set of React hooks that you can use to fetch and cache data. As you can see, we've created our own special hook here called use user. Now, if we hover over use user, you can see what it returns is a type use query result. If you actually dig into the types in React Query, you can see that this is a, a union of a couple of different uh, result states because there's the state where this query fails, there's a state where it is currently in process, there's a state where it hasn't happened yet. The state we're kind of interested in though is the success state. And let's start by just doing kind of like a hard-coded example of this. Here I have my extract statement. There's a couple of interesting things going on here. Let's start on the inside. We're doing type of use user. So use user, of course, is our hook. It's a function and we want to get the type of that so that we can then wrap that in the return type utility. Maybe I'll just extract this out to make it easier to see what's going on here. R, of course, is our union. And actually we can see some of the union here. We have a defined query observer result. We have the error result. We have the loading result. Uh, there's actually a few others in here that we can't really see there, but this is our type of R. And so now what we want to do is extract the success variant out of that union. And this is pretty easy to do with extract. We can say we want to extract out of R where is success is true. And let me just take off this uh, indexing into data for a second here. If I hover over our type, you can see that we have query observer success result. So this is the success result type that we have just extracted out of R. And so you can see we can very easily narrow this very wide type R into the specific one that we care about and maybe want to use in other components. We'll look at that example of that in a second. I just want to show one more thing is that we can then index into that particular value on that type. And now finally, you can see that our user data here is the ID and the number exactly what we're returning from our hook here. And so we've actually taken this hook and we can extract the right variant and then index into it to get the type of the data that we could then care about using elsewhere in our application. One thing I'll point out here because we've been using extract is we can kind of inverse the logic here and use exclude. We could say, let's exclude anything where is success is false. Remember that to use is success true is success false, uh, you kind of have to know what is going on inside the use query result type. But most libraries, it's very easy to get into them to see the types, find the unions that you care about and find the right field to differentiate on. But now you can see if we hover over this, we have the same thing. We have the ID and the name because now we're excluding everything that's false instead of just extracting everything that is true. Both exclude and extract are possible, but let's look at maybe a practical way to use this. So, and let's add a couple of React components. This functionality is pretty similar to the example I used a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at mapping types. We still have our use user hook here. We're gonna make use of that in a second, but now we have this wait for query component. And let's take a look at how we use it before we look at what exactly it does. If we scroll down to our main function here, we call our use user hook and and we have our query there. And then we use our wait for query component. We pass it the query. As the children here, we have a callback function that receives some props and then can actually act on them. And here's what we want. We wanna be able to pass a React query to our wait for query component here. And then we want the callback here to get a strongly typed set of props that are whatever the data in our use user hook is or whatever use query result we pass in as our query here. How can we do this? All right, let's break down wait for query. There are two props, of course, that we have, we have the query itself, which we are going to define here as just any query that extends use query result. Children is a function here that needs to return a React element. And the argument that we pass to children here is where the extract happens. And this is pretty much exactly the example we just looked at a moment ago. We're extracting from our query where is success is true, and then we're indexing into that to get the data. And that is going to be the argument that we pass to our children function. And this works. It's very straightforward. We don't really need to know anything more about the query type, as long as it's something that is a use query result. So as long as this is a value coming from a React query hook, we can wait for it and then pass the data for the children. And then the actual implementation here is pretty simple. If the query is loading, we'll show loading. If it's not success, we'll say there was an error. But if it's not loading and it is success, then we can call our function and pass it the data and this all works. And of course, if we come down here and hover over props, you can see that we have the strong typing that we want. Of course, these types follow all the way through. So if we go back up to our hook here and maybe we change this. So instead of name, uh, this is first name. And now we can come back down and you can see we have a type error here saying name does not exist. 
If we look at props, it's ID and first name. And so we can make sure our callback here has strongly tied types to the query that we pass in. I hope those examples of extract and exclude give you a little more intuition than the TypeScript documentation does on where these might be useful in your own work. What I've been seeing recently is that these are pretty helpful when it comes to working with library types specifically, and also when building your own utilities to use across your application. So definitely take a look at your own code and see if there are places that you can improve your types by using extract and exclude. If there are other built-in utility types that you want me to cover, definitely let me know about them in the comments below. Thank you so much much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.